Welcome to lecture 4G on advanced concepts in cache memory. This is the second such lecture on advanced concepts. We have already seen in the last video some of the concepts about advanced cache memory topics. Today also we will continue our discussion on trying to understand few problems and few concepts so that our learning can be much more enhanced. Let us go one by one. Consider the first question. This is a match the following. You are given two sets and then you have to find out a mapping. Wherever possible, try to get a unique mapping from set X to an element in set Y. Very rarely one or two entries in Y also may be matching. Now, let us try to see what is given in set X. We have been given certain types of cache. To start with, no right allocate caches. We have to see what no right allocate cache. It is basically about when you encounter a miss. Then, depending upon whether it is a right allocate caches or no right allocate caches, we will be taking a decision should we bring the missed block from the main memory into cache. So, allocate caches means go to main memory, bring that missed block into the cache, write it on the cache. If it is not right allocate means we are not reserving any space in the cache. So, you directly write into the main memory. Now, the second concept is non blocking cache. So, when you encounter a miss, once the miss is under progress, are you permitting the cache to get request from processor such that if it is a hit, can I process it? So, hit under a miss means a miss is already under progress and during that time, whether if there is a new request come from a processor, let us say the processor is an out of order processor, then can I supply the miss? The second one can also be a miss. So, like that, they are called non blocking caches. So, that whenever you give the misses, the misses are going into the main memory and then you are going to bring the missed block back. It can come in out of order also depending upon from which main memory location it is going to be fetched. So, you need some kind of a bookkeeping that is called MSHR. The third one is called pipeline cache. The internal operations of the cache are being further subdivided into let us say splitting of the address, indexing into the cache, tag matching and then extracting the corresponding word. Now, in that case, if you do like that, the basic operation of the cache itself is being pipelined into smaller, we could operate the cache much faster by having a better clocking time for cache. Now, you go for multi banked cache. So, what do you mean by multi banked cache? Rather than ca considering cache as a single monolithic entry or unit, we are dividing caches into smaller pieces and the sets are being interleaved. Set 0 is in this place, set 1 is here, set 2 is here like that. So, when your axis is across sets 1, 2, 3, when it shows a sequential pattern, the adjacent set can get ready if they are not kept physically in one location. That is called interleaving. Now, third is called the, the, the next cache memory technique that has been given is called hardware prefetching. So, prefetching means to bring something a priori. Can I bring something from the cache early and keep it in a stream buffer such that your mispenality can be reduced? Victim cache. When you evict a cache memory block, then only you are giving space to a new block. So, when you encounter a miss and if the corresponding set where the miss is encountered is full, we may have to evict one of them that is called a victim. And the moment you evict out some block, what if in the future the evicted block is been re-referenced? Then you may have to go all the way to the next level of memory and then bring it back. Rather than that, we can have an extended buffer wherein the recently evicted box are being kept that is called a victim cache. So, if, the, if there is a miss on the recently evicted one rather than going to the main memory, I can get it fetched from the victim cache. So, in that way, miss penalty is getting impacted. Next, you have way prediction. When you go for a set associative cache, parallelly you have to perform search in all the locations and then depending upon where the hit occurs in out of the multiple ways in a given set, where hit occurred from that point we may have to return the corresponding word. But set associative cache because of an additional multiplexer, it is little more time consuming than a direct mapped cache. So, if you use some prediction mechanism by that, I can search only in one way of a given set based upon the prediction, then it is just like a direct mapped cache. If the prediction is good, you are able to return the word. If the prediction is not correct, then we may have to go and parallelly search in the other way. So, in that way, my hit time can be improved. We have multi-level caches L1, L2 cache. They can be inclusive or exclusive type depending upon the movement from L2 cache to L1 cache. 
is a cut paste operation or a copy paste operation. And the last one what you see is known as a write back cache. So caches are of two types based upon what we do during a write hit. If it is a write back cache, then we are going to modify only in the cache and the main memory is not updated. As and when a block is been evicted and then if the block is already in a modified state, then you are going to update the main memory. So in write back cache, we require an additional bit which is called the dirty bit or the modify bit and during eviction, if the dirty bit is set means the content in main memory and the content in the modified cache block are different so that there is need for an updation. So these are all different types of cache memory optimization. Let us see whatever we have discussed which is present on set X in what is the proper matching in set Y. So look at set X. The first one is called no write allocate cache. So we have seen that for no write allocate caches, the there won't be any kind of block eviction. So when you have a write miss, then you are going to directly write on the main memory. So nothing has been brought into the cache. Since you are not going to bring anything into the cache, there is no block eviction required. So A is perfectly matching with the case of 9. The next is called non-blocking cache. So in non-blocking cache, we already told that we can service multiple misses at the same time. So depending upon which of the response is coming back, you require some bookkeeping. So non-blocking cache is being implemented with the help of MSHR. So pipeline cache like what we already mentioned, pipeline cache is going to improve your cache clock cycle time. So it allows faster clock cycle that is what called pipeline cache. So multi banked cache wherein adjacent sets of a cache are being interleaved. So it exploits sequential interleaving that is what you see in multi banked cache and because of this interleaving we are able to access it faster. So there can be a reduced hit time, it can be a possibility. Now hardware prefetching, so what happens in a hardware prefetching, you are going to reduce the miss penalty. So this is what is going to happen in hardware prefetching. Because rather than going into main memory, we are bringing from the place, the, from the stream buffer that is, is being kept. So victim cache, victim cache, the basic advantage is you are going to reduce the miss penalty. So that is happening in the victim cache as well. And uh, Wave prediction that is called G. So wave prediction it will reduce the hit time. So we are getting the benefit of a direct mapped cache even though it is a set associative cache. And multi level cache like what you told it can be inclusive or exclusive cache hierarchy that is been used in multi level cache. And write back cache uh, they will basically refers to dirty bit during the eviction. So that is called the multi back cache. So in some cases there are multiple options so we will see that as well. So if you look at uh, the first one, no write allocate cache, and uh, as it is already mentioned, there is no block eviction on a write miss. Second one, non-blocking cache, for that implementation requires MSHR. Third one is pipelined cache, pipelined cache allow faster clock. Fourth is multi-banked cache, so in uh, multi-banked cache, you are exploiting um, sequential interleaving. And another possibility is uh, multi banked cache will reduce the hit time as well. So that is another possibility that we have because since uh, you are going to the next one, you are keep things ready. Hardware prefetching, it will reduce the miss rate. If you prefetch and keep it something, then you are going to get the benefit of uh, that hardware prefetching. Then uh, it depends upon if the prefetching is been done such that the prefetched blocks are kept in the cache itself, it will reduce miss rate if the prediction is correct or if it is kept inside a special stream buffer, then it will reduce the miss penalty. That is the way how it is been looked into. So two possibilities are there. Now victim cache, victim cache will reduce miss penalty because uh, rather than going into the main memory, I can come back directly take it from the victim buffer. G is wave prediction, wave prediction anyway reduces the hit time that we have seen. H is multi-level cache, multi-level cache there are two options. One is uh, it will use as an inclusive and exclusive hierarchy. The other option is it will always reduce the miss penalty as well. And the last one is I is write back and then it refers to the dirty bit during eviction. So with the different kind of uh, optimizations that we have learned, we are trying to correlate with the properties or the features that are associated with this optimization. So in this way, with uh, this particular slide, you will be getting a summary of various cache optimization techniques and where they are getting impacted. Now let us move into another cache memory typical problem where an optimization is being done. This is basically 
on the concepts of early restart and critical word optimizations. Let us first go into that and try to understand. A 16 bit processor is connected to the following memory hierarchy. You have an L1 cache which is 8 KB 4 way set associative with a block size of 32 byte. L2 cache 64 KB 8 way set associative with 128 byte block size and the main memory is 16 MB. Now here is a statement. When an L1 cache miss occurs, it takes 30 cycles to fetch the first word of the block from the L2 and 2 cycles for each subsequent word in the block. So what is this? You are talking about a scenario where you are encountering an L1 cache miss. So a miss occur in a block. Now what we do is we are going into an L2 cache bringing a block of data. We have to understand it is a bus that connects your L1 cache and an L2 cache and the bus can carry only one word at a time. So even though our requirement is to filling up a block of data in an L1 cache, you have to bring in the blocks from L2 to L1 that is one block of data from L2 to L1 through the connecting bus where the bus can bring only one word at a time. But in order to bring something from L2, first you have to identify the block in L2. It can be a hit or a miss. So there is some initial overhead in identifying the block from L2 and then transferring. That's why it is told there is a slightly bigger time required for bringing the very first word. Thereafter, it is done in a pipelined way. So if you look at the given statement, we can see that it takes 30 cycles to fetch the first word of a block from L2 cache and two cycles each for the subsequent word. So this is the initial overhead. So the first word will reach in 30 cycles and thereafter for every two cycles next next word is going to come. Assume that processor is stalled due to an L1 cache miss occurred on a word whose first byte is. I am talking about this particular address. So upon trying to fetch this particular address from L1 cache, it is being identified as a miss. So you have to bring it from L2 cache a block of data. So the processor is stalled. Assume that the word is a hit in L2. This is a basic assumption that you make. How many cycles will the processor stall before it resumes execution under the following cases? So we are trying to apply early restart optimization on the L1 cache, critical word first optimization done on L1 and L2 caches and third one none of the above optimizations are done on cache. So in all these cases basically we are talking about what is a miss penalty. So in this case there is a miss that occurred. And uh, once the miss is occurring, the processor is stalled, you have to bring in the block of data and then return the word to the processor. So essentially it is a question of asking how much time it takes for that particular word to be ready. So we have seen different optimization in early restart, as and when the word comes, it is being transformed. In critical word first, when you bring from L2, it is brought in out of order fashion. The word that is being requested by the processor is being brought first. So there is a rearrangement that happens. So depending upon that, the waiting time of the processor, which is nothing but the stalling that happens, is varying. And the last one, there is no optimization. So you have to bring the entire block to whatever it called. Initially, first word is 30 cycles. Thereafter, two cycles each. Bring the entire word and then you transfer. So in all these three cases, one is facilitating an early restart optimization. Second one is critical word optimization. So in the critical word optimization, the peculiarity is you are the L1 cache is telling to L2, this is a critical word optimization, keep the critical word that is a word that is being asked by the processor first, that will come through the bus first followed by the subsequent words. So there is a communication that L1 need to tell to L2 that what I am looking forward is for a critical word first. So L2 has to do some rearrangement. So some kind of an extra circuitry is required in L2 to do this process. So an optimization should be done in L2. Now when the words are coming in L1, we have to understand at L1 it is not coming in sequence. The critical word is coming first, so it has to be kept in the appropriate place in the block. Let us say seventh word, if it is a seventh word, do not keep the critical word on the very first location. It has to be kept in the seventh word, then thereafter whatever is coming 8, 9, 10 like that and then I have to rearrange. So there is an optimization required both in an L1. So it's a combined optimization or the joint work of L1 and L2 that realizes a critical word first optimization. Whereas in the case of an early restart optimization, as we have already learned, the content from L2 is coming in the normal fashion, first word, second word, third word like that. And as and when 
the word that we are discussing, the word that is being demanded by the processor reaches L1, L1 has to give. So, the optimization is done only in L1, L2 is unaware about this whole process. That is what it is being given in the question. There are three different cases at which we have to compute the processor stall time. What are these three? The first one is an early restart optimization done only on an L1 cache. A critical word first optimization done on L1 cache as well as L2 cache and none of the optimizations done. Let us try to attack this problem. So, a 16 bit word processor has been given. So, one word is nothing but 2 bytes. 16 bit is 2 byte. I am talking about a main memory of 16 MB that is 24 bit addressability is what the processor has. Now, L1 cache is 8 KB, 4 way associative 32 byte block, L2 cache is 64 KB, 8 way 128 byte block. So, we have to find the split up of the tag, the set index and the offset in both these cases. Now, L1 cache whenever there is a miss, first word will take 30 cycles and thereafter 2 cycles each for subsequent word. So, this is the address that we have missed. The question is about how much is the processor stall cycles. So, first we will see about early restart optimization done on L1 cache and then we will work on the critical word first optimization and the third we will look into a case where none of the optimizations have been done. So, with this background let us try the main memory is 16 megabytes, 16 megabytes is 2 power 24 bytes. So, there are 24 bits in the physical address. Now, the L1 cache address split up that we have to see. So, the address split up is given by number of sets equal to cache size divided by block size into associativity. I am talking about an L1 cache of 8 KB. 8 KB is 2 power 13 bytes. So, 2 power 13. Block size is 32 bytes. So, it is 2 power 5. It is 4 way associative. So, 2 power 2. So, 2 power 13 divided by 2 power 7. That is 2 power 6. So, 6 bits are used for set index. Now, what is the block size? Block size is 32 bytes. So, if there are 32 bytes, the number of words that I can keep it in a block is 32 and one word is nothing but 2 byte. So, 16 words are there in 32 byte because one word is 2 byte. So, 32 byte can accommodate 16 words to represent a word I require 4 bits. So, the offset value out of the total address which is given as 24 bits, there is a 6 bit index and there is a 5 bit offset that is given by 32 bit 5 bit offset. This 5 bit offset consists of 4 plus 1. The first 4 bits will tell you the word number and the last 1 bit is byte within the word. So, this is the split up of the 24 bits. You have a 5 bit offset which is consisting of the first 4 bit of the 5 bit is your word. Here the word is very important because when you bring something from the L2 cache, you are bringing one word at a time. So, how do you know what is the word that you are talking about? The first 4 bits here will tell. Then you have a set bit, uh, 6 bit of set index and the most significant 13 bit is the tag. Now, if you look at the L2 cache split up, which is not directly required at this point, but still we will try to find out the address split up with respect to L2 cache. Here also cache size by block size into associativity. Cache size is 64 KB. So, it is 2 power 16 and 128 by block. So, 2 power 7, 8 way associative cache. So, 2 power 3, 2 power 16 divided by 2 power 10 that is 2 power 6. Here also we have 6 bits of set index. So, what is the block size here? 128 bytes and number of words per block 128 divided by 2 64 words I can accommodate in a block of size 128 bytes. So, 6 bits. So, out of the 7 bits of the offset it is 6 bit is going for this word number. So, this is the split up I have 7 bit offset the last 7 bit which is 6 plus 1 and then we have set index of 6 bit and the most significant 11 bit is for the tag. Now, coming to the optimization, this is the split up of the L1 cache and L2 cache that has been given. Now, this is a miss that is occurring, the hexadecimal address. So, there are 24 bits required. So, we can see that there are 6 hexadecimal numbers that has been written. So, an L1 cache miss occur in this address 0x415ACE. Let us try to split this hexadecimal address into binary. So, the L1 cache miss is 4 stands for 0, 0100, 0, 0. 1 is 0, 0, 0, 0001, 5 is 0, 0101, 0, 0, A is 1010, 0, 0, C is 1100 0, 0, and E is 1110. 1, 1, 
and we are talking about an L1 cache. So, in the L1 cache, what is the split up? We have a total of 13 bits for the tag. So, the most significant 13 bits that has been shown in this black color, this correspond to the tag bits. The next 6 bit which is shown in this blue color, that is the index. And then you have the last 5 bit that is the offset, out of which 4 bits which has been given in the red color, this 4 bit is the word number and the last one is the byte. So, if you look at the blue bits that indicate set number of 22 and then if you look at the word number, this is word number 7, that is what is been given. So, if you divide the L2 cache split up, then this particular cache miss will go into this location. So, here we have only 11 bit of tag, 6 bit index and the last 7 bit is offset. So, index will tell set number 53 and from there word number 39 onwards we have to bring. So, in this whole problem, we have to understand this particular miss occurred on set number 22 and in set number 22, since it is a miss, you are going into L2 cache, where you are searching L2 cache in set number 53. It is an 8 way set associative cache, so all the 8 ways of set number 53 is searched and see whether this tag match occur. If the tag is been matching, then you have to bring a block of data. So, from where you are bringing this, you are you have to bring all the contents with respect to this this is the 39th word I am talking, but then if you make it completely 0, that is the beginning of the address. Now, let us forget about L2 for the time being. What we are interested is in L1, in an L1 cache optimization that we are trying to do. So, the property of L1 cache say that it takes 30 cycles to bring the first word and 2 cycles for the new word. So, when a miss occur in an L1 cache, you are going to bring it from L2 cache and going to fill up this block one by one. So, first you bring word number 0, word number 1, word number 2 like that. How many words you will bring? Equal to the capacity of L1. That is why we are looking at the address of L1 in this case. Even though we learned about address of L2 and split up, we are looking at what is the word number inside the missed L1 block. So, if you look at the word number is 7 or nothing but it is the 8th word because you start at 0, 1, 2, 3 etc. up to 7. So, this is your 8th word. Now, what is the time taken? If it is an early restart technique, the first word will take 30. After the 0th word, you have 7 more words. Each of them will take 2 cycles each. So, 30 cycles plus 7 into 2, 44 cycle is what you take in an early restart mechanism. So, the crucial component of the question is identifying the word number correctly and that is what is going to determine this case. Now, when you come to the critical word first, we have to understand in the critical word, whatever the word number, word number 7 is what you bring first. So, that is the very first word. So, that is called 30 cycles. Because of the optimization, L2 cache rearranges the order in which the words are been flowing from L2 to L1. Word number 7 is being taken first and that is why it is called 30 cycles. Now, there are no optimizations done. How many words are there? We have 4 bits that represent word. So, there are 16 words. The first word will take 30, thereafter 15 more words are there, each will take 2 clock cycle each. So, that is why total I have 60 clock cycle, that is the normal optimization. So, when you do a critical word first, processor that would have otherwise restarted execution at the end of 60 cycle, now can resume execution at the end of 44 cycles. Whereas, if you use a critical word first, then it can resume execution at the end of 30 cycles. So, this is the way in which you are handling this problem. So, let us try to summarize what we did here. We have initially a case that is been given where an L1 cache miss address is given. You have to split the address into tag, index and offset. Look at the offset portion, extract the word number. Now, the first word will take some initial overhead. Thereafter, you find out how many more words are there to reach the particular word that we are referring into. So, that many number of extra clock cycles are being required. So, in this case, 30 was the overhead for the very first word that is been moved and thereafter I need to bring the 7 more words. So, 7 into 2, that means that is 14 more additional clock cycles are being required. Now, let us move into another question, which is basically about a program mapping. So, we have dot of variables that is been defined in a normal program. And these variables are been assigned to some space in main memory and then during execution they are been brought into cache. Since we have understood a generic program instruction execution in our first few modules, 
Thereafter, we learned about the cache memory hierarchy, some optimizations that has been done. This is a question which will give you a complete picture of an execution of a program when it uh, dealing with a program level and its corresponding mapping into an architectural level into the memories and then how it has been done. Once you get a clear understanding about how this problem solved, I think your concepts both at the instruction execution as well as at the cache memory level would be very thorough. The program may look a little complex initially, but let us try to make it simple and try to understand part by part. Let us go into it. I am talking about a small RISC processor based system that uses 32 bit word and has 4 GB main memory. It has a 1 KB direct mapped cache with a block size of 32 bytes. Assume the cache is initially empty. Consider a small program P that consists of 14 instructions. Instruction size is also same as word length. Word length is 32 bits, so each instruction is also 4 bytes. Execution of P swaps the content of 3 arrays A, B and C. Each has 24 words and how do you do that? Using a loop that iterate 24 times. A temporary variable T of size 1 word is used for facilitating the swap. Consider the following physical address for the first byte of P. P is your program stored in some address. A, B and C are the arrays and the starting address of these arrays are given. T is a temporary variable that is used for swapping. So, generally since it is a swapping program, the general high level structure is first you move the content of A into T, B is moved to A, C is moved to B and then the content of T is moved to C. So, the first portion is we have to understand this question. So, what this question is all about? In this question, we are talking about a program that consists of 14 instructions and the program has a loop. This loop is doing a swapping of three arrays. You have A array, B and C and you are using a temporary variable. So, content of A is moved to T. So, T equal to A of 0. Then from B you move to A. So, A of 0 equal to B of 0. Then C is moved to B. So, B of 0 equal to C of 0. The last one, whatever was moved out from A initially which is kept in the temp that is now moved to C. So, C of 0 equal to T. So, in this process by making use of a temporary variable, the content of B will move to A, content of C will move to B and the content of A will move to C. That is what you are seeing. And the addresses are given. So, we have to find out where in which set of the cache memory these addresses are being mapped and after this mapping, we have to see during the execution are any of the arrays been pointing out and because it is a direct mapped cache, will, will there be any address conflict? One will evict out another and then based upon this total parameter, we are going to ask about some understanding level questions on this. So, what is the first one? Give the split up of tag, set index and byte offset fields of the address. Simple one that we know. How many data memory loads and stores are generated by the processor to swap the data and how many of them are hits and how many of them are misses? And the last one is list the data items that are present in the cache after the execution of P. So, let us take one by one. You are talking about a RISC processor of 32 bit. So, I am using 4 byte as uh, one word, main memory of 4 gigabytes. So, 2 power 32 bytes, physical address is consisting of 32 bits. 1 KB direct mapped cache with a block size of 32 byte and then my instruction size is equal to the word length. So, that is also 4 byte. So, A, B, C are arrays of 24 words each. Give the split up of the tag, set index and byte offset fields of the address. So, let us try to go. Main memory is 4 gigabyte. So, that means 32 bit address is there. So, cache memory number of sets, cache size by block size into associativity. I have a 1 KB cache. So, 2 power 10 block size of 32 bytes. So, 2 power 5 associativity is 1 because it is direct mapped cache. So, this will be 2 power 5. So, that means 5 bits are there in my address. Number of words in the block, there are 32 byte and one word is 4 byte. So, that means a block can contain 8 words. So, I require 3 bits in my address which will represent the word number. Now, looking at this, 
since you have 4 GB of main memory that is already been mentioned, you have 32 bits in the address. So, this 32 bit consists of 5 between my set index, the middle 5 bit is set index and I have 32 byte block. So, 5 bit is my offset out of that first 3 bit is the word number and next 2 bit is byte within a word. So, most significant 3 bits out of this byte offset is word number 3. So, 5 plus 5 10 is being gone out of 32 10 bits is gone remaining 22 bit is the tag. So, this is the split up of the address. Now, let us try to see P has 14 instructions total out of this let us try to understand what would be the structure. So, the program is all about first I copy from A of I to T then B to A C to B and then back T to C. So, in each of these let us consider each of this there are basically 4 steps here now. What is about first step? I have to read the value of A, I have to store the value into T. So, when you look at the second one, it is about loading or reading the value of B and storing into A. So, whatever is on the right hand side of the assignment operator, we have to load these values. This is the value to be loaded and this is the value to be stored. So, if you look at that, the memory instruction, since it is told it is a risk machine, it is a load store architecture. So, if you look at these are the instruction, I have to load A, store in T load b store a, load c store b, load t and store c. These are 8 instructions that I am talking about in one iteration of the loop. So, totally I have 24 iterations. In one iteration there are 8 memory references that I am talking. So, the, so in the case of a risk instruction type which is following a load store architecture, only load and store instructions can touch memory. And it is this accessing of this memory is where it is going to interface with your data cache. So, in one iteration we have 8 memory references in which 4 would be load operations and 4 would be store operations. So, total number of memory references is I have 24 times I have to iterate this loop. So, if even if you have 14 instructions available, these are the 8 instructions probably that may repeat inside this loop. The other instructions may be either displaying some result or some initialization code. So, out of the 14 instruction, you may have a loop and generally this much should come in the loop for sure. So, we have total 192 memory references. So, the question is how many of these are hits and how many of these are misses if you assume initially cache is empty. So, out of this 192, we know that 96 would be load operations and 96 would be store operations. So, the address split up is given 22 bit tag, 5 bit set index and 5 bit offset. Program P is stored in this address and the starting address of A, B, C and T are being given. Now, using this address split up, let us try to understand what each one has. When talking about P, so 20608 out of us 22 bit is tag. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 this constitute it is hexadecimal 20 bits of the tag is given. The remaining 12 bits I am expanding. So, the remaining 12 bits means in the case of P, what we are talking, what are the remaining 12 bits that we talk about? It is 0, 4, 0. So, 0, 4 and 0 is written here. These 2 bit also will go along with the tag. So, this makes your total tag of 22 bits and the next 5 bits shown in the blue color that is a set index, 3 bits will show the word. So, even though this remaining 5 bit is your offset, out of that the first 3 bit shown in green color is the word number. So, this means the program P would be mapped into set number 2. Why 2? Because this blue color portion that indicates set number 2 and the offset is word number 0. So, how many words are there? 8 words of program P will go to set number 2 and thereafter the next 6 words will go to set number 3 that is the next continuous address. Now, let us take A. So, this is the tag portion of A and this will tell you. So, A is mapped to set number 12 right from the beginning itself. So, that is word number 0 itself A is starting. So, set number 12 I can store 8 words of A and set number 13 will store the next 8 words of A. There are total 24 words for A, B, C. So, set number 12, set number 13 and set number 14 will store 8, 8, 8 words of A each. 
Now, coming into B, B is actually stored in set number 9, but the word number is 1. So, in set number 9, I am starting from word number 1 onwards is the place that is been given. So, if I am starting in word number 0, the entire block I can store my words, whereas in this case B can store only 8, B can store only 7 words because I am starting from 1. So, in set number 9, I will store B0 up to B6, then set number 10, 11 and 12. 10 will store another 8, 11 will store another 8 and 12 will store 1 each. Coming into C, if you remove this, so this is the portion what has been shown in the black color, should have been ideally been blue, that shows set number 18 and word number 2 onwards. So, I could store only 6 words starting from word number 2, word number 0 and word number 1 are not part of C. So, inside my memory in set number 18, word number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that much is what C. So, essentially what happen is in set number 18, I could store only 6 elements of C, set number 19, 20 and 21. So, 19 will store 8 elements of C, 20 will store another 8 elements of C and 21 will store 2 elements of C. Now, we can see that over a period of time, there can be some conflicts that is been happening. Now, let us see what happened to T. So, T is mapped to set number 10. T is just only one word and it is word number 2. Now, we can see that since T is mapped to set number 10, your B has a problem, B also will reach set number 10 and B reach to set number 12 also after some time where there is a conflict with A. Whereas, C is uninterrupted, nobody is coming and occupying the place of C because C is located in set number 18, 19, 20 and 21. For A, which is the contents of A residing in set number 13 and 14 is not having any problem. The contents of B, which are residing in set number 10, which has problem with the T. So, every time I access T and B, it has some issues. So, with this split up, we are able to know that which are the places in which they are going to be located in the cache. This is a summary of that. Program P will be in set number 2. A will be beginning from set number 12 onwards, 12, 13, 14. B will be there in set number 9, 10, 11, 12. C would be there in 18, 19, 20 and 21. And T would be occupying set number 10. Please understand T is a single word. So, B and T have conflict on set number 10. So, that is the first important point. After the sixth iteration, content of set 10 is T because T is the one last. So, if you look at the iteration, the last step of an iteration is C of i equal to T. So, at the end of the sixth iteration, the content of set number 10 is T. In seventh iteration, your store T would be hit, but the next load B, that is B7, will result in a miss. And thereafter, whatever load happens in T will also be missed because you bring B into set number 10 and then later you are bringing T is also into the same set number 10. So, they will mutually evict. This will continue till the 14th iteration. 15th iteration store T would be hit. The next load B15 will be a compulsory miss and it will be loaded into set number 11 till B equal to 12. So, it will end with the T, T as a hit. So, essentially it will be contained. Set number 10 will contain T at the end and B15 will not go to set number 11, it will go to set, sorry, will not go to set number 10, it will go to set number 11 that has been sold. Similarly, B and A have a conflict on set number 12 that we already mentioned. So, the contents of A in set number 12 would be removed and B23 would be placed in set number 12. So, let us try to understand what happens. Initially, you told that you have a program P which has 14 instructions and it is mapped to set number 2. Set number 2 will hold the first 8 instructions of P, P0 to P7. Since P has another 6 more instruction and program is generally placed sequentially, so P8 to P13 that will be kept in set number 3. So, this is the set number that you see and that is the contents that I am drawing. Now, we have to understand the first step that you do is T equal to A of 0. So, T is set number 10. So, here your T will come and then your A will come 
into set number 12. So, here what all contents that you will have a 0 to a 7 will be loaded there. So, the states set of lines that you do is t equal to a of i, a of i equal to b of i, b of i equal to c of i and c of i equal to t. So, looking at this the next iteration is going to be b, b get loaded here, but we have to understand since the b is starting with the word number 1 only b 0 to b 6 would get loaded. And then you are going to load uh, c and then c is peculiarity starting from word number 2. So, z 0 to c 5 only 6 words are going to be kept there because it is starting from 2 word 0 and word 1 are not for c. Now, as the execution proceeds over a period of time after some time this uh, set number 10 is where your b 7 ideally would be coming here b 7 to another 8 numbers that is b 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 and 14. This many also will get mapped into set number 10, but every iteration it will bring the block containing t when you access b then b 7 to b 14 would be placed again that will be thrown out by t again that will be thrown out by b. So, this repetition will happen until b value equal to 14 and then b 15 onwards another 8 elements. So, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 and 22 this b 22 would be kept in set number 11. So, in the meantime what happens? your a of 18 to a of a 8 to a 15 will come here and a 16 to a 23 will come here. Now, what happens is this b 23 would be mapped to here. So, this a 0 to 7 would be taken off and then b 23 would be residing. In the meantime, you can see that c combination of that c 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 would be there and c 14 onwards the next 8 elements would be there. So, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So, 21 c 21 and this is 22 and 23. So, the c is untouched from 18 to 21 c resides 6 words here. 8 words each in the next two and 2 words in the last one. A not a problem, 8 words each here, but essentially where A 0 to A 7 was there, it was replaced by B. Starting portion of B, no interruption, big problem happens in set number 10, set number 11, whatever is B is there, no issue and nobody is going to replace this. With all these parameters, if you look into the summary could be what we have seen, set number 2 is occupied by P 0 to P 7, set number 3 p a to p 13, set number 9, b 0 to b 6. Since we access t for the last time, so b would be replaced with t. So, t would be the resident of set number 10 at the end of the program. 11, b 15 to 22, 12, a would be replaced by b in the last iteration. So, 12, b would be the resident. 13, it would be a, a 8 to a 15, 14, a 16 to a 23, these are all not disturbed at all. And then in 18 onwards, your C is going to reside as been shown. So, if you look at that, the number of misses that you encounter in all of them, A, we have to see that uh, how many of them are going to be misses and how many of them are going to be hits. A, you have 45 hits, B, you have 35 hits because we are going to access A for 24 iteration. 1 for reading and 1 for writing. So, 24 stores and 24 loads are there. So, 45 times you are going to get hits in that. B is 37 hits only because of the replacement. C, we have 44 hits that is going to happen and T is 39 hits. So, total is 165. So, that is the way how we are going to summarize on this. So, this program will give you total mapping and total understanding. So, this will give you 
uh, the complete picture of how this array program is going to be mapped and in what way processor and memory interaction in a load store architecture works. So, we are just concluding this uh, problem solving session. We started with the optimization techniques of cache and trying to map it with the properties. Then we learned about early restart critical word first optimization and towards the end we summarized with uh, a program variable mapping. So, we got a total picture of what is happening inside the cache memory right from the beginning of what are the fundamental concepts of cache from the mapping problem to identification problem to block replacement and write strategy. We learned about optimizations and number of problems are being solved. I am sure with this your background of cache should be clean and correct with more numerical problem solving your conceptual clarity in the subject will enhance. With this we come to the end of uh, this tutorial session. Thank you. Thank you.